Hey guys, this is Carl from CarlsHabsHere.com here with another tutorial. Uh, feel free to like my videos down below, uh, subscribe to me, or if you've got any questions, then leave me a comment down below, or you can come to my uh, website, CarlsHabsHere.com, and you can contact me via the Contact Me page. So today, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be finding out how you can recover a permanently deleted file from your Mac, MacBook Pro, MacBook Air or any Macintosh device really. Um, when I say permanently deleted, I mean when you take a file and it, you put it into the trash because you don't feel like you need it and then you empty your trash can and then suddenly it's gone. Now, let's say two weeks later I suddenly wanted that movie which was We're the Millers. And instead of me having to try to find ways to download it or going on to buy another one, which I really can't be bothered to do, when I could just go ahead and recover the file or any other files that I've ever needed. Um, so we're going to be using an application which is called Stellar Phoenix Mac Data Recovery. The first thing we're going to do before we do this is we're going to go to our system preferences and we're going to click on security and privacy we're going to click to lock the make, to make changes and we're going to, and we have to make sure that when we on the generals tab where it says allow apps to be downloaded from we want to make sure that mac app store and identified developers is checked once that's done you can lock it back up now what we're going to do is we are going to go onto the internet and we're going to come to this website here. I'm going to put, it's called recoveringdeletedfiles.net and I'm going to put this into the link in the description below to this direct link so that way you don't have to go searching for it either. You're going to scroll down and you're going to click on the download button here and save it and then in a minute or so it's going to download the file. Now, once this is downloaded, you can go ahead and exit the internet, and then just set the file up as you or set um install the application as you normally would, uh, and save it onto your desktop or wherever you want to save it to. So once that's done, go to your launch pad, launch the application, enter your password, and now it's going to uh, load up. Now, before you go any further, one thing I need to re one thing I need to tell you is the fact that it will ask you for a registration key at the very end of this process. Now this registration key is not free. It costs about between 60 to 80 pounds, so it's not a cheap investment. However, if you're in real desperation of it, if you're in real desperation to uh, recover the file, then fair enough, you have to buy it. But otherwise, you can watch my other video, which I'm gonna be making uh, fairly shortly, which uh, will be about the free way how you can do this. This does take slightly longer. It uses the terminal uh, on the MacBook Pro, and uh, yeah, but it, it does come to the same conclusion at the very end. You will still get your files back. Okay, so once this once the application loads up, go ahead and click on the big blue button saying recover data, and we're gonna go ahead and click on quick recovery because we only want one file, and we sort of I sort of think I know where it could kind of be. So I can go ahead and click quick recovery. If you click on deleted recovery, um, it, it, it does pretty much the same thing. It just takes a little bit longer, but it does a bit more of a thorough search. And again, the lost file recovery does an even more thorough search. It takes again a little bit longer and you should be able to find your way to your file using any of these, um, any of these menus here or any of these, um, categories. Similarly, you can use photo recovery, CD recovery, iPod recovery, or recovery as well. So I'm going to click on quick recovery and the next thing we're going to come to is this menu here. Since we deleted it from the Macintosh HD drive, we're going to find it within the Macintosh HD drive. So click on scan. Now this will take a minute or two, so I'll come back in a couple of minutes and I will tell you where to go from there. Okay, so uh, over here it says the scan has been completed uh, and now I can select the files or folders from the list and click the recover button to recover my lost file. So 
Uh, we come to this list now. It's a fairly confusing list if you don't actually understand what's going on. Uh, so to make uh, so this program is fairly user friendly in the sense that if you click on file list, which is in the top left hand corner, it puts everything into categories. So you've got video, text, photos, miscellaneous documents, audios, archives, and applications. Since I've lost a video file, uh, I'm going to double click on video. Uh, I think it could have been an MP4 format. If not, I can pick from any of the other selections and hopefully it, it will be in there. And I lost the file with the Millers. Now, if you see here, this is all the files, all the video files that I've ever had ever. So any of the ones that I've deleted, any of the ones that I've kept or are still on my computer will still be there as well. Now, at the top, you can see here, it says we're the Millers. And this is the file that I want. So I'm going to check it. Yep. And I'm going to click on recover. Now, this is what I was saying where, where if you have not registered the product already, it'll ask you to put in your registration key. And if you don't have one, then it'll ask you to buy it online, which costs between 60 to 80 pounds. Once you've done this, or once you've purchased it, then you can go ahead and re press recover. Okay, so I'm going to click on recover because I've already done this. Now, if I were to click on desktop, let's say I want to save it directly to my desktop, it's not going to let me. It will say this will lead to data loss. Please select another location as the destination. This is because it, it just won't let you save it from your Macintosh HD drive to your Macintosh HD drive. So, in that case, uh, I've used my external hard drive instead. Um, which I would highly recommend you have in case also in case other things go wrong that way you can also back up all your work onto there and also from here I can now recover any of my lost files so I'm using my external hard drive and I'm going to choose now I'm going to wait for a few minutes a uh, few seconds even whilst this uh, just recovers itself to my external hard drive Okay, so it's done now, and I can e exit this application. Uh, you can save it in case you want. You can save the information if you want to use it at a later stage, but to be honest, I have no need to, so I'm going to click no. Now, I saved it into my external hard drive. I saved the file into my external hard drive. As you can see, I've got all my original files, but now I've got a new file here, or a new folder even, called root. Now within this root file there's, an, there's a subfolder called video and within this subfolder is a folder called mp4 and within that is the eventual movie. Now all I'm going to simply do is I'm just going to drag and drop the movie onto my desktop and voila the movie is here. So I can go ahead and open this And there's the video. Oops, sorry. Just to show you again. So you've got the entire video there. Just as it would be originally. So there you have it. Uh, you have now successfully recovered uh, the original file that you wanted to, uh, that you deleted by accident. And, well, it's back. Uh, if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to drop me an email on carlsapsy.com. Uh, anyway, I'd just like to say thank you. And um, in the next video, I will show you how you can use the terminal to sort of achieve the same thing. It does take slightly longer. It does get a bit confusing because you have to access invisible files. But it is it also results to the same thing, and it's also free. Anyways, uh, thank you very much for watching. This is Carl from carlsapsy.com.